Hey guys, it's Logan again. Welcome back to another tutorial on creating an advanced platformer in Game Maker Studio 2. In this video, we're going to be implementing a little bit of visual recoil to our weapon to bring it to life a little bit more. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is, like I said, the gun recoil. This is really simple. Let's go into our um, weapon, our player's gun. And we have our step event where we have our script shoot. And I want you to go into this event, and some of you have had issues with the gun kind of lagging behind the player uh, during this update script, like the X values using the lerp, but it's not. And this can be fixed by cutting and pasting all the movement uh, code. So all of this movement stuff, the X, the Y value, and the image X scale update, and cutting it, and add an event and add the end step event and then paste it in there and your problems should be fixed and I'll explain why so when you use the step event all the step events uh, in the game so all the objects step events are executed one after another uh, so basically just think of like a stack of step events from all the objects and we can't guarantee what order these are executed so the computer will execute them from top to bottom, however it's stored in its in its memory. And so what happens is, let's imagine that our gun's position, so I'm going to give you an example, our, the gun's X and Y position gets set to the player's X position during its step event, and then it moves down to the... Um, player's step event and executes it and during the player's step event it gets moved so what happens is um, I would make a presentation I might do a separate video from this is let's say this is the player and this is the gun the gun gets attached to the player and then it moves from the gun step event to the player's step event now the player's step event moves the player forward and then the draw call happens and draws our game. And now the gun looks detached from the player because the gun got positioned, the gun's position got updated before the player. So it always seems to be a step behind. So what the end step event is, is all the code executed in the end step event is executed after all of the step events have been executed. So all the step events execute, including the player. And then we run all the end step events. So now we have our gun update in that end step event. Uh, and now it's guaranteed that our gun's position will be updated after the player's position. And I hope that made sense. I know I said execute a lot and step a lot, but <laughs> hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, and the putting this stuff in the end step event should work. And like I said, it's different for some people because... Uh, the code gets called in different orders for the step events and we can't guarantee we can't make one object's step event be called before a second object's unless it has to do with the create event and the instancing order and in that case it's still a pain it's better this is what the end step event exists for so that's what we're going to use all right so now after i did all that talking uh, let's go ahead and do the recoil the first thing we need to do is initialize a recoil amount. So this is how far we want the gun to kick back when we fire a projectile. So, come on, I keep getting updates. And then, so what we could do is go into our scripts, go into our player group, go into our gun group, and initialize player gun script. And let's give it a variable called uh, recoil amount i'm using amt for amount and i'm going to give it four remember four to us is one pixel so every four pixels is like one of those little blocks that we paint on the character so it's basically we're going to kick it back what looks to us like one pixel so i'm giving it four we can increase this later on if we want to and then we need to apply that kickback amount well when do we do that well, it's when the player shoots. So let's go into the scr underscore player gun shoot script. And we're just going to apply it right under here. We're going to do, um, actually, I'm going to apply it above the creation events under the shot timer. So we're going to do x minus equal because we want it to move backwards uh, when we shoot. And we're going to give it um, image 
x scale, which is going to be 1 or negative 1. Remember, negative 1 means that uh, our image is flipped facing the left direction. And in that case, we'd want to add to our x value in order to make it look like it kicks back. So if our player is facing left, then a positive x value from our player will be backwards in relation to our player. I hope that makes sense. So we're passing in our image x scale and multiplying it by our um, recoil amount. Well, what happens now? After you get this set, I'll give you a second to process this. X minus equal image X scale times recoil amount. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a small uh, visualization. If we're facing right, this is what it's going to be equivalent to. X minus equal recoil amount, basically. Anything times 1 is the original value. Or if we're facing left, it'll be negative 1. So X minus minus recoil amount. So two negatives end up creating a positive, and it's an addition. So I'm going to put this back, image, x scale, and let's run it and see what happens. We're going to have a slight issue, or not issue. I just took a drink on video, that's right. Okay. Um, um, actually, this isn't at all. Okay, so we put the the update in our end step event. So our shot's being fired, our X is being subtracted in our step event, and then our end step the event is running and putting our uh, X position back where it was before the subtraction was included. And then our draw uh, screen is being called. So then it's drawing everything. That's why it doesn't appear to be moving to us. So what we're gonna do instead well, we're not changing anything here. We keep, we're keeping this, but we're going to go back to our O player gun end step event. And instead of just instantly putting that gun back to, to lock on the player, we're again going to use lerp. So it slowly interpolates towards uh, the player. So we're going to use lerp x to our O player x. And uh, what value are we going to give it? Let's go ahead and set it to 0.5. And I will show you something. We're going to use kind of a, not advanced, but uh, it's going to look kind of advanced, a uh, way to handle this. So I'll show you the issue that's about to happen. Okay, so we get the kickback of the gun. Looks kind of nice. But now when we're walking, you can see it kind of uh, dragging behind the player. And it's not really a great effect. Um, if you like that, you can keep it. But... To me, it looks kind of odd, like it's an accident of the programming because it is an accident of the programming. So we can fix this by using a uh, something I came up with, or I'm sure it's used a lot. It's not something I came up with necessarily. Let me make sure that I tell you guys the right stuff. Got to pull my code up. Okay. So first, we can pass in the max function. And let's say I want to give the max of um, our x speed, so o player dot x speed, and 0.5. And what the max function does is checks which one of these has a greater value, right? And returns that value. So if x if our x speed is at zero, then it's going to return 0.5 for our lerp. If our x speed is at 1, then it's going to return 1 for our lerp. And what that does for us is if we're moving and we have a lerp of a, po a full value of 1, then it'll do the exact same thing as this equals uh, o player dot x, which is what we had before, which keeps the gun attached to the body while we're moving. So... I'm going to go ahead and put a comment here. Um, lerp x o player x 1. These are equivalent. So that's what we're trying to get out of this is we're seeing if we're moving. And if we are moving, we want our value here in the third to be 1. If we're not moving, then we want it to be our uh, smaller value so it'll smoothly kind of go back into place. So now what we need to do, because our x speed right now can be, remember, 4.8 is our max x speed. So if we have 4.8, I'll show you what happens. We can go ahead and run the game. I'm going to comment this back out. 
we can go ahead and run the game. And you'll see it goes in a positive, it's actually multiplying by four times uh, what we want it to be. So it's actually moving like crazy away from us. <laughs> it's just kind of flying across the screen. So we need to cap this now. And one way we can cap it is by using min. And let's put all this in min again. Or uh, no, 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 not all of it. We'll use min of x speed and one. So I put max and then everything in the first term is min and then parentheses o player x speed comma one and then another comma after that entire expression and then our second value for the max so i know it's kind of hard to see everything right now um, but what's the other issue that we have well our player's x speed can be negative so we need to get the absolute value of a negative number so we're going to use abs for our player's x speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and space these out so you can kind of see um, we have that, that, and then our max. So I know it's kind of complicated. It's really hard for me to explain actually. Um, the absolute value is grabbing the positive value of our x speed. So no matter if our x speed is negative four or positive four, both of those will return positive four. So it basically turns your negative, if it is a negative, into a positive. And then we're getting the minimum value between that positive x speed. So remember, uh, that x speed could be zero. And if it is zero, then this is gonna return zero. Or it can be uh, greater than one. And in that case, it's gonna return the second value of one. And then we're getting the max speed of that second value, or that first value, and 0.5. And it's really hard to explain. I hope that you guys can get it. Um, if you don't get it, just know what max, min, and abs do and take them away, uh, start from scratch, and see if you can fix the problem on your own. That's the best way to do it. So you'll see now, when we're walking, our gun's not shooting back, it's not applying a recoil. And it looks nice, we can actually apply a recoil even when we're moving later, but for now, I think this looks better. And if you like it the other way, then do it the other way, it's not a huge deal. It's not gonna affect your gameplay or anything. Okay, so now that we have the recoil done, let me see how we're doing on time. We're at 12 minutes, um, so I'm gonna give it um, we're going to go through the code pretty quickly here. Uh, we're going to combine these into two videos. So, all right, I cut the video. I didn't change anything. Uh, so, like I said, we're at 12 minutes. We applied the recoil. I'm actually going to uh, do a separate video on the code review because it could take a little bit longer than 12 minutes. So, again, what we did in this video was apply the recoil. We moved, uh, I'm going to cut this out. We moved our uh, movement, our positioning into our in-step event for our O player gun. So now you have the X, Y uh, updates and the image X scale updates inside of our uh, in-step event in our O player gun. And our step event contains one script that's called SCR player gun shoot, which you'll see we applied a, a change to our X value dependent on our x scale and multiplied at that x scale, x scale by our recoil amount which we set inside of our initialized player gun script which our recoil amount is four and let me show you if you give it eight you'll see what happens it's going to be uh, a larger recoil it's kind of it's kind of going to kind of jump back quite a bit and actually that might look even better um, i might keep that and yeah that looks pretty cool so yeah, we'll keep working on these effects and stuff. Uh, effects aren't a huge deal. I want to start getting into including enemies soon and, uh, again, get our jetpack system uh, flushed out for upgradable stats and uh, what have you. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Be looking out for the next video. It's the code review. This is going to be really important to move forward with. Uh, we're going to go back over everything because there's some scripts that we haven't used in a while. And we need to make sure that we refresh on all this and iterate on all this and make optimizations where they need to be placed and uh, also comment our code for the future. So be looking out for that video and I'll see you guys then. And uh, y'all have a good one. Uh, like and subscribe. Definitely subscribe if you've been watching these videos and haven't subscribed, please.